Welcome back to Center Webcast. This is the COVID-19 edition, episode 16. We're here at the uh, our, our third section. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some data, thinking about reopening. Um, and then there is maybe some breaking news, but that breaking news might have disappeared. But uh, yeah. Brandon, you had some uh, pieces of data that you wanted to talk about a little bit, um, in, in particular in relation to um, this idea about reopening and what are these metrics for reopening in terms of number of cases per county? Do you want to talk, take, take us through that? Yeah, I'll uh, speak to that just for a moment. And let me make sure we got my production over here. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Again, thank you to our guests. And um, just to kind of uh, reiterate some of the things that we've been talking about. Um, you know, here's, here's a, uh, a breakdown of, of, of what we are in Pennsylvania in, in terms of total new cases. Um, so as you can see, you know, the, the, we're, we're living in what, uh, you know, I apologize for this, this phraseology, but um, we're living in what's possibly a natural experiment. And we don't know really if this thing is going to stay plateaued off, you know, in terms of new cases, or if it may go down as we reopen, or if it'll go up. So this is an unknown, you know, um, not only should Pennsylvania look at other states, but looking at countries like Norway and, and places like that, that did try different things to to reopen. So that's, that's kind of the debate we're at right now. I wanted to point out um, a letter that came from uh, Representative Struzzi's office. Uh, again, Representative Struzzi has been on the show a couple of times and we're very grateful for him sharing information. But I think this um, data wise kind of brings out a couple of the complications that people are talking about. You know, he's, he's, he's asking uh, the governor to uh, consider um, looking at um, not putting Indiana County, which has only 62 total deaths, uh, with Allegheny County, which has over a thousand. And so if you look, uh, this is the type of data that uh, is informing that thought, you know, total deaths to, to this date um, by county. And so you see the dark blue areas, of course, around Philly and Pittsburgh, you know, these population dense counties, um, you know, that's worry, right? That's, it's worry that there's a lot more cases. But I, I you know, we pointed out a few times on the show that um, it's not, uh, the reopening will not be based on total cases. And, and, and in fact, the, the, the situation on the ground is not total overall cases, but it's more cases per population. And when you look at cases per population, which is what um, the, the, the last iteration we saw of the governor's plan, the governor's plan is to uh, look at 50 new cases per 100,000. If there's not 50 new cases per 100,000 over the past two weeks, then, then that county will move to the next level of reopening. And so again, we have Indiana, which is uh, about 23. Now this, this data is a few days old, um, I need to look at look at making my own map. So every time I talk, uh, we, we can we can show the map. But um, you know, uh, you know, in the previous map, it looked like uh, 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 Allegheny County, Pittsburgh is much in a much worse case. Um, on this map, per population, they're fairly similar. Allegheny Southwest is at 28. Indiana's 23. Uh, Westmoreland Southwest. Uh, is at 41. And then just one more bit, um, this is again the uh, uh, data uh, looking from the New York Times. Uh, this is another way of looking at new cases, looking at cases, how often they are, um, how, how often the number, how long it takes for the number of cases to double. And again, you look uh, at Indiana, Pittsburgh, some of the Southwest region is is in a, a, a fairly similar outcome. Now, one last piece, um, you know, again, uh, going back to what many concerns are, Representative Struzzi and others, is, is the worry, should we, shouldn't Indiana 
reopen at a different time as say Pittsburgh or others. And we, we might wanna think uh, a little bit differently about that. Um, if it is the case that, uh, that some of these more populated areas have more uh, uh, active cases, then do you want to be the first one to reopen and uh, people wanting to get out of their house maybe for the first time in a month come to visit? So they're, they're, you know, they're, you know, as an economist, we want to look at both uh, benefits to reopening, which um, as, 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 as Dr. Uh, uh, Adams and uh, Senator Pittman said, and, and others are, are concerned about, there's lots of benefits to opening. But we don't really know uh, what the consequences of that are going to be now. So it, again, going back to testing, tracking, knowing where people are going, um, you know, uh, that may that may be a pause to open up Indiana when its neighboring counties have more total cases. So back to you, G. Thank you. That, that, that's great. Uh, the, um, the the amount of ways of looking at this data is uh, is always just astounding. Um, uh, I'm going to let's move right along. There was some possible breaking news that we talked about at the beginning of the program with new possible some new guidance from the governor. But it seems like that breaking news may have passed and um, we don't have confirmation of that anymore. But I understand there will be new guidance um, coming from the governor's office, um, particularly about what Brandon was just talking about in terms in terms of um, how how this how this uh, uh, reopening breaks up regionally. Um, I don't know if uh, Senator Pittman or Dr. Adams, you have any uh, a comment or reaction on uh, some of those numbers? Well, I, I, I looked at Sybil's Facebook page and the information on there, and it seems like that was a uh, concept plan developed by a state representative. Um, I don't get the impression that that was anything that the administration okay. had formally adopted, but, you know, maybe they got some advance notice. So I would just caution that, uh, you know, we wait until we hear from the administration directly tomorrow. Uh, the only other thing I would add, and that data was, was very fascinating, I, I, I just bring out two points to consider. One, you know, as testing increases, the number of positive cases are also going to increase just by the nature of testing a greater population. And I think another really important factor is to look at hospitalization rates. Uh, hospitalization rates are declining and they're continuing to decline. So that tells me that the cases that are being uh, identified are less severe because we're getting people who are perhaps asymptomatic or have very mild symptoms. But you know, when, when we started this social distancing objective, it was to flatten the curve to ensure that the healthcare system did not become overwhelmed. And I think we can conclude very clearly that our healthcare system has not been overwhelmed at this point by this virus. Uh, in fact, UPMC indicates only 2% of their beds have COVID patients. Uh, Indiana Hospital has had a total of 16. Uh, statewide, 70% of the ventilators are remaining available. And the Department of Health has data on that by a county by county basis that I think would also be good to look at in this context. So I, I, I think you're exactly right. And, I, and there, there is some breaking news here. This, this is an article from um, uh, just 4, 4 p.m. today uh, uh, about IRMC is furloughing 200 employees starting, uh, I guess, immediately and going through May 31st, um, which is, is obviously bad news, but it speaks to exactly I think what you know that balance that we've been talking about. Um, they are super ready, and we actually had uh, had them on Tuesday. I asked him about their finances. He didn't mention the furloughs, um, but it really speaks to the fact that their you know their demand is way down. And despite the fact that they're able to now open and do those elective surgeries, um, they are clearly financially uh, financially hurt. Is that something your office is looking at these hospitals? I mean. That that's a big deal. Is, is there? Yeah, it, it is a big deal. And and today they they received a ten million dollar low interest loan. Uh, it's not a grant; it's a loan uh, to try to help with this cash flow. But I think what we're, you know, what we're concerned about is, you know, and I've seen it in my own family, the hesitancy to go to a healthcare institution 
is real and it's there. And you wonder how long that is going to continue. And you worry about the extent that society is going to defer other health care issues and concerns out of fear uh, over the virus. And so I think even though electives will now be able to resume, I believe starting tomorrow, you know, the question is, how quickly will that return to what it was just two months ago? Um, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see uh, what happens, uh, what happens there. Um, so uh, I think we are uh, going to wrap up here. Uh, Sybil, can you tell us what's coming up here over the yes. next week? <laughs> yes. Who do we um, got? Hello, are you there? We hear you. Yeah, we hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have uh, the Attorney General coming on, and uh, we have someone from Sunflower uh, Yoga Studio coming on. Also, we have confirmation that we have someone from uh, the Community Guidance Center coming on to talk a little bit about mental health, and I'm uh, very anxious to get that conversation started. Um, I'm starting to hear a lot of things from friends. They're starting to hit walls, you know, being inside with kids for so long, um, you know, playing the role as a teacher um, and a caregiver and mom and dad, um, and just the fact that you can't go anywhere. Um, there aren't many activities for the kids to do, and it's starting to wear on people's mental health, and I'm starting to hear a little antidote to that um, through social media with telephone calls with relatives, um, things of that nature. So also people that are stressed and, um, about, you know, money, finances, um, what's going to happen in the future, just general angst about what's going on right now. So I'm very anxious to talk with um, the representative from Community Guidance Center as well. Also, um, we are going to have a uh, faith gathering of interfaith leaders to talk a little bit about faith um, in the midst of COVID-19. That's uh, next Thursday, I think, That's a week from today, we should have a, a bank of uh, pastors and ministers here to talk about how they are shepherding their flock through the pandemic. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, guests, uh, for uh, joining us. Uh, we are going to wrap up here. We'll be back again on Sunday at 2 p.m. We'll be doing a uh, sort of a, a greatest hits, what we looked at this week. And next week, we'll be um, back on Tuesday with again with the Attorney General and uh, uh, Commissioner Hess will be back and hopefully have some more details about re what reopening is going to look like here in Indiana County. So signing off. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.